dream comes true. You could swim along the river, all the way to the sea. You could fly up in the sky, above the clouds and trees. You could plant a flower garden up on top of the moon. You could swing through the jungle all afternoon. Wherever our story takes us, I can't wait to see. Yes, friends, come and read with me. It's online story time. Hello everybody and welcome to Online Storytime at your Grand Rapids Area Library. I'm Miss Tracy. I'm Teacher Missy. And we are so excited to have you with us here today. Hey Teacher Missy, before we talk about, give them a hint, give them a clue what we're going to talk about today. Do it what you were doing earlier. <laughs> before we start talking about that really fun thing, let's sing. Let's. Okay, Storytime friends, would you join us? Get your clappers ready, whatever you're gonna clap today. Here we go. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, clap your hands. That was some delightful clapping, my words. Thank you for clapping with us. So, my friend, what do you want to talk about? You know, there's something else that makes a pretty good clapping sound. <gasps> What's that? If you take a good look at the picture we have on our board this morning, this guy right here. I wonder how he claps, because there's just a little heat. What is that, teacher? Ms. That is a beaver. A beaver? It's a beaver, and they are fascinating. And they clap with their tail. I was walking through the woods one day and I heard a beaver's tail clap against the water and it is so loud, very loud. And they do it to warn their friends that somebody, that, like there's danger around. Right. Like there's a bear or something that can harm them. And I am looking all around going, what's the problem? And I realized I was the problem. Oh, sure, because yep. they aren't used to seeing you there. Sure. And they do, they just crack that flat tail against the water and it makes a big, big, big slap. Yep. That, well, that's fascinating. I guess I didn't yeah. know about that. So, and what's the beaver doing there, teacher? Well, he's, he's taking a pretty good chunk out of this tree. They, um, they come up on land and they chew and they chew and they chew until the tree falls down and they take some of it for food and if it's small enough, they'll take branches or pieces to make into their beaver house. That's right. And they have amazing structures that they and live in. They not only build their lodges, the place they live, but they also sometimes build a dam. Yes. Um, across a river or something, and then it kind of makes a pond for them right, to live in. Right, that holds the water in. Um, sometimes it's a problem for um, the, the DNR. They, Absolutely. Um, you know, there are areas that end up getting flooded that they don't want yep. to flood. Yep. Um, and sometimes they have to move the, the, the Absolutely. their dams. But, um, but it's pretty ingenious that they can do that. Well, I read, when I was reading about beaver this week, I read that a beaver is one of the only animals other than humans that change their environment. They make the environment work for them. Suit them, yes. Yeah, so, you know, they, they change the water flow and they build things higher and they make their lodges cooler by taking things out. It is fascinating, people. Yeah, that is fascinating, and I didn't know that either. But if you think about it, they're cutting trees down. No other animal really does that. That's right. Animals live in the trees and chew on them, but they yeah. don't cut them down. That's right. Hmm. It's like they're building houses. Nature's little loggers. <laughs> Do you have any good books about beaver? Well, I might. Miss Tracy, this is our first book this morning. Oh my gosh, is that a beaver on the cover? That is a beaver, and it's a pretty good picture of a beaver. They have the cutest little feet with good nails because they do a lot of digging and scratching yeah. and clawing. Um, and this book is called Beavers. It um, is coming to us from Bellworth Media, and it was written by Emily Green. But these are not pictures that are drawn. These are not illustrations. These are photographs. So the pictures we look at today are real pictures of beavers. Beavers are rodents with brown fur and they are great swimmers. 
Hmm, can you think of another rodent, Miss Tracy? Um, I think a mouse is a rodent. A mouse is a rodent. Mm -hmm. A mouse is a rodent. Beavers paddle through the water with their long, flat tails and their webbed feet. And if you look at this picture right here, their feet have skin that kind of hooks their toes together, and that's why they're such good swimmers. It's like having little paddles on the end of your legs. Beavers eat plants and bark. They gnaw on bark with four long front teeth. Look at those teeth. Miss Tracy just told me something interesting. If you look, their teeth are very orange. And I just found out just this morning from Miss Tracy that's because they have iron in their teeth to make them hard. And, we're gonna talk and, about I, that later. and I think if you are cutting a tree down with your teeth, you probably have to be a little hard. Beavers cut down trees with their front teeth and they use the wood to build dams. And that's what we were talking about when they build either a house to live in or they obstruct a water flow. <clears throat> Beavers also use mud and rocks to build dams. Dam controls, dams control the flow of a river or a stream. Ponds form behind beaver dams. Beavers build lodges in front of these ponds. And that's, that's what they call their, that's what we call their houses. It's a lodge. Here's the pond right here, and you can see where they've been hauling sticks and debris and then they formed a dam. There's a good picture of one, Tracy, right there. So that the water can't come through. Beavers live in the lodges and they enter through underwater tunnels. That'd be pretty fun, wouldn't it, to have a house you could swim right into? Mm -hmm. Lodges keep beavers safe from predators. Do you remember what a predator is? That's an animal that eats other animals. Might be hunting for a beaver. Beavers slap their tails on the water if they sense danger. Get inside the lodge, that's what it tells them to do. Look at, he's got that tail up and he's gonna whack it right down against the water. Makes a big sound. And that, well, that is the end of my book. I was thinking I had one more page, but that's, that's pretty amazing. I can't slap anything to make, even if you slap your hand on the water, it wouldn't make a, a sound quite like that. They're pretty amazing, and we have them here. We have them in Minnesota, so watch out for a beaver. They're pretty cool. Hey, story time friends, teacher Missy. Yes, ma'am. Do you wanna do some flannel fun? I love flannel fun. Yay, it's flannel time. Oh yeah, it's flannel time. All right, so if you notice my friends, I have a beaver lodge on our flannel board and I have a little beaver friend right here. And we're gonna learn some facts about beavers. But you are going to help me by singing along the refrain. We'll talk about that in a second. But if you notice, okay, so here's my friend Beaver sitting here. Here is our Beaver Lodge. And do you remember in the book teacher Missy read to us, it said that beavers enter their lodge from under the water. That's what this blue is. Pretend this blue goes all the way across. And so a beaver would swim, 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 swim in the water and then come up into their lodge. And where the beaver is, our my little beaver friend here is, is the eating area. They have an eating area. And then back behind the eating area is called the nesting area. So they sleep back here and they eat here and then they can come in and out. They have the a bedroom and a dining room. I know, that's crazy, isn't it? So, so is beaver. Okay, so the song that we're gonna sing together is called, Do You Know About the Beaver? And this is how it goes. Do you know about the beaver, the beaver, the beaver? Do you know about the beaver? Share what you know. Okay, and then after we sing that, I am going to share a beaver fact with you. Okay, here we go. Can you sing along now? Do you know about the beaver, the beaver, the beaver? Do you know about the beaver? Share what you know. Did you know the beaver's teeth 
never stop growing. They chew on trees to keep them from growing too long. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so they have to cut down trees to uh, wear down their teeth. Do you know about the beaver, the beaver, the beaver? Do you know about the beaver? Share what you know. Do you remember why a beaver's teeth look so orange? Teacher Missy mentioned this, yes. They have iron in the enamel. The enamel is the coating on your teeth and beaver have iron in their enamel, which is super strong and it allows them to chew down trees. Sure. That's so cool. That is cool. Are you ready? Do you know about the beaver, the beaver, the beaver? Do you know about the beaver? Share what you know. Do you know that beavers cut down trees with their really strong teeth? And then they use all of the branches in their lodges and in the beaver dams. You knew that one, didn't you? Oh. Are you ready? Okay. Do you know about the beaver, the beaver, the beaver? Do you know about the beaver? Share what you know. Did you know that the beaver also uses their tail to balance while they're cutting down trees? Oh. So they can go up and chew on a tree and their long tail helps them not to fall over backwards. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, so that's another adaption or adaptation that they use their tail for. Do you know about the beaver, the beaver, the beaver? Do you know about the beaver? Share what you know. Did you know, and now you do, that bilver, be, excuse me, beavers build underwater entrances to their lodge do you remember why they do that? Teacher Missy mentioned it. Yeah, it's to keep them safe from predators. Right. So they, they can, can they swim seen, underwater. Yeah. That's right. Do you know about the beaver, the beaver, the beaver? Do you know about the beaver? Share what you know. This one's fascinating. Did you know a beaver can stay underwater for 15 minutes? without having to come up to breathe. Wow. That is a crazy long amount of time. I know. Did you know about the beaver, the beaver, the beaver? Did you know about the beaver? Share what you know. Okay, one last fascinating fact. We know that beaver bring branches into their lodge. But if they have a branch between their teeth, which is how they carry it, and they dive under the water, does, won't the water get into their lungs? Won't the water get into their bodies? I would think it would. This is fascinating. The beaver have lips that close behind their teeth. Our lips close in front of our teeth. Oh my goodness. They have lips that close behind their teeth so they can hold a branch in their teeth, swim underwater, and not drown. And not drown. That oh is gosh. so fascinating. That is. Did you know about the beaver, the beaver, the beaver? Did you know about the beaver? Well, now you do. Hey, thanks for learning about the beaver with me. Miss Tracy, I have another beaver book. That looks like a beaver lodge on the front. That is exactly what it is. And if you look, you can kind of see what they're doing. This little guy right here is holding a branch in his mouth. And that's what they do. They take sticks and limbs and whatever they can get a hold of and stuff them in and kind of weave them back and forth. And it looks like there are two of them working on this. Wow. They must live as a family. That's a big job. Yeah, oh, I'm sure it's a very, and I, I think they just keep fixing it all the time. Right. I mean, I think they build it and then they just add on or fix it if it gets broken or 
Well, like well, everyone likes to redecorate now and again. Well, yeah, you have to, yeah. Sometimes you just, the old has to go. Yeah. Um, the lodge that Beaver built. This is the lodge that Beaver built. Randy Sew and Shine and illustrated by Ann Hunter. And this book comes to us from Candlewick. It's written, this is written in a, a kind of a fun way. This is a really good book. I like this book. All right, let's uh, just bear with me, peeps. I'm getting there. Oh, there he is. Oh, look what they've done. Look at all those pointed things that look like pencils. That's where the beaver chopped the tree down. This is the crunch in the darkening wood of teeth against bark where the willow once stood on the shore near the lodge that beaver built. There's his lodge right there. Teacher Mitzi, do you know why they cut down trees next to water? So they can float them. That's right. So then they can cut off bigger branches and right. float them to their lodge. Right, because they couldn't carry them. Right. So they'd have to have a way to get, get them around. They are like little augers. They just crack me up. This is the dam blocking the stream that slid through the woods like a silvery seam, protecting the lodge that Beaver built. There's his lodge. Lots of animals in this picture. Oh, there's a moose. These are the yearlings that pile up sticks, then pack them with mud like mortar and bricks, repairing the lodge that Beaver built. So see, they're, they're having to make repairs having to fix it. Here's a couple of those stumps in the water itself. These are the muskrats, crafty and bold, that pop in one day out of the cold, sharing the lodge that Beaver built. They share their house. I wouldn't have known that. That's very nice of them. This is the musk turtle burrowed down deep in layers of mud for a long winter sleep under the lodge that Beaver built. Oh, there he is, right underneath here. Looks like a good place to spend the winter if you can't get to California. This is the curl of the wispy white stream that drifts from the mound while newborn kits dream. Snug in the lodge that Beaver built, kits. kits. So they just call their babies. Baby beavers must be called kits. Kits, yeah, that's what a baby beaver is. This is the coyote pawing the mound. He scratches and howls, but the walls remain sound. So he slinks from the lodge that beaver built. He's trying to get in there, isn't he? It's not gonna work though. He'll have to move on. This is the mama hauling a limb with kits close behind her, learning to swim circling the lodge that Beaver built. This is the goose with the silly black crest, plucking a frond to cushion the nest that sits on the lodge that Beaver built. So look, the goose is building its nest on top of the Beaver house. It's like a high rise. Lots of critters live in here. Ooh. All right. This is the button bush alder and sedge, hiding new ducklings from hawk on her ledge, shielding the lodge that Beaver built. Here's some baby ducks in there. I'm seeing lots of babies, Miss Tracy. Do you think this is kind of springtime? I think so, just like now. This is the heron, one minute still, with an, and the next with a fish in his scissor-like bill, in the marsh near the lodge that Beaver built. This is the moose with rippled brown flanks, munching on waterweed close to the banks, waiting by the lodge that Beaver built. They all seem to get along quite well. This is the flood that blasts through the dam, pounding the pond like a battering ram, destroying the lodge that the Beaver built. Oh, that water got to be too strong. This is the family swimming upstream in search of a site for their new house of dreams, leaving the lodge that Beaver built. There they go. This is the crunch in the darkening wood of teeth against bark where the willow once stood 
on the shore near the lodge that Beaver built. There is that beautiful lodge. So they started over Miss Tracy and they were able to build a new one. Wow. Isn't that amazing? They just adapt right away and move on. That's the lodge that Beaver built. Hey, story time friends. Hey, teacher Missy. Yes, Miss Tracy. Are you in the mood to wave a scarf? love to wave scarves. We're going to give Teacher Missy her very favorite green scarf. It is my favorite. And I'm going to use the red scarf. Now, out of your story time kit, my friends, I want you to find your scarf. And if you don't have a scarf, that's okay. Wave your sock. Wave a paper towel. Wave a washcloth. Just find something that you can wave. Okay? Are you... Excuse me? What was that? Oh my gosh, of course! Story time, friends. Tiger would like to be your story time friend today. Tiger says he lives in a part of the world where they don't have beaver. And so he's oh. fascinated to find out about the life of our friend beaver. All right, Tiger, you just hang good out there. Good morning, good morning, good oh, morning, Tiger. Sorry, good morning, Teacher Missy. I was so excited about listening that I forgot to say good morning. That was terribly rude of me. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Oh, thank you, Tiger. All right, we'll put you right there, my friend. Okay. All right, we are going to first start out with waving our scarves together. We're going to do a little scarf warm-up, a little different scarf warm-up than we normally do. But we've done this song before, so some of you will know it. It'll be new to some of you. Just start waving with us. Here we go. Oh, you know, and I'm going to get into Missy words because she's... Oh, thank you, Miss Tracy. Need, need those. Okay. We wave our scarves together, we wave our scarves together, we wave our scarves together, because it's fun to do. Wave them up high, wave them down low, wave them in the middle, because it's fun to do. Now how about if we Let's just spin our scarves. Ready? We'll do one more verse. Here we go. We spin our scarves together. We spin our scarves together. We spin our scarves together. Because it's fun to do. Spin them up high. Spin them down low. Spin them in the middle. Because it's fun to do. All right. Now we're going to do one called the beaver gnaws down the tree. Do you know, Teacher Missy, do you know what the word gnaw means? It means to chew. Yeah, it means to chew. Chew like over and over and over and over. So that's what a beaver does to a tree because they chew the tree down. They're gnawing the tree down. Okay? You know, it's kind of like when we eat a carrot. That's right. We're kind we, of gnawing on a carrot. That's exactly carrot. it. Okay, so our beaver is going to gnaw down the tree. The tree is going to fall to the ground. The beaver is going to chew up the bark. And finally, when the dam is done, we're going to say, the dam is done. We're all excited. Okay, here we go. Oh, the... Beaver knocks down the tree. The beaver knocks down the tree. Hi ho, just watch them go. The beaver knocks down the tree. Okay, now our tree is gonna fall. You ready? The tree falls to the ground. The tree falls to the ground. Hi ho, just watch it go. The tree falls to the ground. Now. The beaver is going to chew up the bark. The beaver sometimes will eat some of the bark, and then the beaver also uses the bark to almost work like cement in their lodges and right. their dams to hold everything together. Okay? The beaver chews the bark. The beaver chews the bark. They add it to the dam, and then the beaver chews more bark. And finally, the dam is done. And we are going to celebrate by throwing our flag or throwing our scarf and catching it. Here we go. 
Now the dam is done. Now the dam is done. The water will not flow right through. Now the dam is done. Oh, nice job. Thanks for playing. Teacher Missy. Yes, Missy. Story time, friends. I had such a good time today. I learned so much about beavers. You know, I did too. And, and I, there are a lot of things about them that I didn't know. And they're fascinating. They really, really are. And we learned a lot of good beaver facts here, and we learned a lot of good beaver facts with our felt board. And then we learned about the beaver building his lodge. And in that they call their babies kids. That's right. That was a great fascinating fact. What was your favorite beaver fact that you learned today? That they have lips behind their teeth. That is that crazy, is isn't it? Amazing. Yep. So that they can hold wood and not have water pass through into their throat. That That's right. so cool. Yeah, that, and I love the fact that their teeth are orange because they have iron in their enamel. That is amazing. But now I think, my friend, it's time to go. It is. Story time, friends, would you sing with us? All right, here we go. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Yes, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Story time is done today, now it's time to go and play, oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Have a good spring day.